An ancient proverb says, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. That proverb is less true today than ever before. Visually impaired people today have access to numerous tools and resources that allow them to work in most of the same positions as sighted people. Despite this, many people still believe that visually impaired people are less capable than their sighted colleagues. Only 40% of visually impaired people today aged 16 to 64 are employed or looking for work, compared to 74% of sighted people in the same age range. This number has fallen in recent years, despite the fact that blind people have access to better technology now than at any other time in history. I spoke with Josh Pearson, program coordinator at the Pola Center in Gardner, to learn more. As somebody who is blind and is looking for work, right, you have to deal with the sighted public's lack of awareness around blindness. Um, my first job that I landed right out of college, I found a job at a telemarketing firm. And at that point, I didn't think it was necessary and I didn't believe that I needed to prep anybody for my blindness. My views have since changed um, because of the discrimination that I've, I've experienced and that other people have seen. If somebody is a strong enough self-advocate to be able to walk in and they have the skills and the knowledge to be able to talk about their assistive technology and all these different things, in my mind, there wasn't really a need to prep anybody. Yet, the data shows that employers often treat a person's vision impairment as a burden during the hiring process, despite protections from the ADA that are intended to level the playing field. This graph from the American Foundation of the Blind shows that, after the housing market crash, both visually impaired and sighted people had a similar drop in the employment rate. However, a closer look reveals that the recession disproportionately affected visually impaired people one in seven of whom lost their job, compared to just one in 17 sighted people. This reflects the historical trend that people with disabilities are last hired, first fired, meaning that they are seen as less valuable workers and are the first people fired in times of economic hardship. I have a really good friend of mine who went on 154 job interviews before she landed her job. And every time you know, she made it through the, the interview processes, but then she'd get to a certain stage and she would bring up her blindness and immediately would be disqualified and, you know, sorry, we found a, a better applicant or we filled that position or, you know, and it's something I think that's potentially could get worse. But even when a visually impaired person lands a job, they are still often hampered by employer discrimination. If you're place of employment doesn't value you and you're, you have to deal with that discrimination and you can't say anything about it because you, you have to eat, um, you know, you, there's only so much wiggle room there for a person. It is clear that employment discrimination against visually impaired people is deeply ingrained in our society. However, as Josh Pearson explains, there is a path forward. Our society needs to see the average blind person working and what they encounter. Um, people just have no idea. They don't know all of the different things that, that come into play for the, the life of a, a blind worker. Author Emleona Godin goes a step further in her book, Their Plant Eyes, arguing, quote, until we have more blind and disabled authors telling our own truths, Stomping down discrimination is nearly impossible. Supporting her point is the fact that 20% of Americans have a disability, but only 11% of people working in the publishing industry have a disability. Such a discrepancy makes positive portrayals far more difficult. It sounds silly, but like get to know people with disabilities. Um, Get to know people with disabilities, get to know people who are in your place of employment, get to know people on your buses, like, and not, don't just go up and start asking a blind person questions, right? Because there's a, there's an art for that. But I think we just, we need to be more open to the idea that disability very much is the norm. The sentiment expressed by Josh is perhaps best explained by Julia Anderson in the Harvard Business Review. She says, quote, when someone who is sighted observes how a person with vision loss manages in the world and manages differently from a sighted person when necessary, the demystification of the disability begins. At that point, the sighted person starts looking past the disability to see the person behind it.
as you're thinking about who you want to work with and what your workplace could look like, open it up to people with disabilities. Let, let us in or we will build a ramp and tunnel our way in. You know, <laughs> we're going to find a way through. Um, it's what we always have done through, around, over. Um, and blindness, yes, it presents its fair share of challenges. But so many of those challenges, and I would encourage sighted viewers, listeners of this, um, think about why you're afraid to be blind. All of the fears that sighted folks are worried about. We have figured out a solution to 99% of them. We haven't technically solved a fear of the dark yet, and we haven't figured out how to stop employer discrimination and ableism in the workplace. If we can nail those last two down, you sighted folks are going to be golden, man. <laughs> it's going to be all set. Our fear of losing our eyesight blinds us to the possibilities of what visually impaired people can do. The solution is understanding, and understanding comes from personal experience. If we want to lose our fear of the dark, we must open our eyes and ears to learn from the many disabled people all around us.